Welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review if you keep coming back for more videos please consider liking and subscribing and ringing the notifications bell so you don't miss anything plus you can join as a member of my channel now for only 99 cents a month and starting now that will give you access to exclusive video content as I'm now posting videos of my pen unboxings as I receive them so you get an early preview of upcoming pen reviews along with your cool emojis and badges today I have a review that I've not been looking forward to let me explain by trying to make a long story short the first fountain pen I bought that was made in India was a fountain pen revolutions Himalaya version 2 it was the worst fountain pen experience of my short collecting career not just the worst fountain pen but also the worst buying experience with a retailer certainly in fountain pens but also possibly in any product I've ever bought I'll link the review in the description and you can draw your own conclusions that put me off any pen made in India for a long time then a generous viewer named Michael Stoop came to the rescue and actually gifted me my first Ranga fountain pen this Ranga 4C in black ebonite I fell in love with Ranga immediately I now own three of them and I love them all so my opinion of pens made in India went from the bottom to the very top of my pen experiences after my latest Ranga fountain pen the incredibly gorgeous Abby Manu a viewer suggested that if I loved Ranga I should try a can write so I happily looked over the can write web page and ordered two one in acrylic and one in ebonite when I unboxed the pens I wasn't pleased at all and I was not looking forward to inking the pens to even try them out I'm actually glad I did though as there are some good points that will keep this review from being a completely negative one I was going to do two separate reviews of the two Canwright pens but I put them together into one review because I only want to say some of these things once find out what has my blood boiling right now <laughs> So even before I've opened the box I'm disappointed in can write pens I bought a couple of pens from them and paid the $25 US shipping which I thought was a little bit steep since I can get Rangas for like $19 shipping but then it arrived in Canada UPS COD and I owed another $25 uh, for extortion fee from UPS so already I'm paying $50 shipping on two pens that probably aren't worth $50 each so anyway we'll see maybe I'll be delighted with the pens and it'll overcome my uh, little bit of um, outrage at being extorted for getting my pens out of hock thank you UPS and here's the box So blue can write box with can write in raised silver letters and a magnetic flip top that's very similar to pen BBS can poor writers can poor customer care email let's take a look here are my two pens plus okay it's a fine nib and here is the the blue pen and right off the bat this feels very light very insubstantial this uh, sharp looks like an ebonite feed I'll tell you what folks this feels like a Himalaya this feels like a fountain pen revolution Himalaya and here's the other one this is supposedly ebonite I think 
it certainly feels more substantial the ebonite very stuck piston there we go converter unscrews off the section that's interesting and it screws on the outside of the section nozzle yeah that's ebonite well at first blush i'm not impressed uh, with these pens just right off the bat they don't feel like the quality of oranga uh, but we will give them the benefit of the doubt and give those nibs and ebonite feeds a try and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of these pens show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide writing samples after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about these fountain pens although you'll probably get the idea long before we get to that part of the video with the can write pens i ordered one in acrylic and one in ebonite let's look at the acrylic heritage first overall it's a relatively large pen it's about the size of my pelican m800 the barrel cap finials and section are made of turned acrylic but this is some of the lightest and cheapest looking plastic i've ever seen it immediately reminded me of this sick b i don't know how to pronounce that it's s-i-k-b fountain pen that i bought on ebay for about three or four bucks they look good in the photos but when you open the package you go oh crap there goes three bucks and as soon as i picked up the heritage i thought oh crap there goes 30 bucks yes it has a swirls of blue and white but this is what people in the guitar industry call mother of toilet seat we even have an acronym for it mots we see it on cheap import copies of gibson and fender guitars all the time good from far but far from good now 30 bucks isn't a lot for a fountain pen especially a piston filler with a number six size nib but let's do another comparison right away here is a hongdian n7 piston filler i just unboxed the other day you can see the difference right away and you can feel the difference in the quality of manufacturing the instant you hold it i mean that's acrylic right there okay let's look at the features of this canwright blue marble heritage from the top we see a flat top finial with beveled edges which tapers in slightly giving it that vaguely pelican like feel to it then we have a gold metal ring and instantly you just you discover something that's off something sloppy you see how that clip ring protrudes out from the cap and finial and only on this side on the other side it's indented so the parts aren't machined within tolerances to actually fit together properly the gold metal clip is not only flimsy to the point that i'd worry about using it because it would permanently bend but also the gold plating on it is just pitted and awful look at the pitting around that really crude uh, engraving of canwright on that clip the cap curves up to a wide gold metal cap band with the brand named canwright uh, laser etched into it the plating isn't much better here and the edge of this cap is so sharp I could peel carrots with it there's a small bevel right there at the end of the cap ring but that just serves to sharpen the edge of the paper thin cap band it also keeps that sharp cap band from running in to the barrel uh, when it's closed which is good there's a small step down to the barrel which tapers away to a gold metal band which is also slightly off as one side is flush and the other side is slightly indented and then there's a small band of clear acrylic right there about a millimeter thick and that's part of the piston mechanism and then the seam between what appears to be the piston knob but is instead a blind cap that unscrews to reveal the end of a captured converter so this isn't really even a piston filler it's a captured converter and that is glued in place so there's no possibility of getting at that piston to clean it out the cap unscrews with one two and a half turns to reveal a long tapering section of the same mother of toilet seat turned plastic and there's a clear plastic ink window bordered by two more gold metal bands 
there's a small flare at the top of the section towards a gold colored steel canrite nib and ebonite feed the section is a good shape and size and comfortable in the hand and those cap threads are not sharp at all let's take a closer look at this nib it's a very simple but good looking nib uh, with canrite the canrite logo and an m for medium engraved in it the feed is ebonite and obviously ground by hand that's not a fault at all as it works very very nicely but you can see the hand done grind work as there it's asymmetrical and that cut up the center is off center as well again that does not affect the function of this ebonite feed at all but it just shows the handmade quality of the of the feed itself which is one of the better features of this pen the nib and feed are part of a nib collar assembly that unscrews easily for cleaning maintenance or replacement the section does not unscrew so the only way inside of the pen for cleaning is by unscrewing the nib unit the inside of the cap shows a clear plastic insert that looks like it's glued in place that's supposed to line up with the top of the section here to seal the nib but since that's opaque there's no way to tell that that actually meets inside there at all the cap posts deeply and securely and with a bit of a click and at first I thought that was a clever way of securing the cap then I realized it's just that metal band at the blind cap clicking its way over the plastic threads of the cap that can't be good for longevity right there unposted the pen is plenty long enough to write with very very comfortably and the cap is very light so if you do post it it doesn't unbalance the pen that much at all what is uncomfortable with the pen posted is that sharp metal edge of the cap band digging into my hand so I write with this pen unposted not that I'll actually have ink in this pen for very long I bought this pen directly from can write uh, on their website for 1864 rupees or $27.22 US now let's look at the legacy model in ebonite this one's an even bigger model and this one is in an ebonite called red swirl where the heritage was similar in size and shape to my pelican m800 i'm going to compare this legacy to my ranga 3c in red ebonite they are roughly the same size and shape only the canrite has conical finials and a cap band whereas the ranga 3c has rounded finials and no cap band from the top we see the conical pointed finial which is separated from the cap by a gold metal clip ring this clip ring isn't as bad as the heritage but it's still slightly indented and not flush however this clip is even worse uh, this feels like it's made of tin foil so i wouldn't use it at all the ebonite cap tapers up slightly and then is straight to a gold metal cap band which is even sharper than the edge on the heritage and the edge of the band doesn't actually even sit flush with the ebonite uh, inside so that's why this is so sharp and it has canrite engraved on the cap band there's a tiny step down from the cap band to the barrel which is straight to, almost to the end where it begins to taper slightly to the matching conical pointed end finial the cap unscrews with almost two turns to reveal a long tapering ebonite section of the same material as the cap and the barrel and a number six size gold colored steel broad nib and ebonite feed there's a flare at the end of the section which is very nice and similar to the flare at the end of the ranga 3c these cap threads are not sharp and the section is very comfortable in the hand and the nib and the feed are part of a nib collar assembly that's easily unscrewed and is swappable with the heritage model the section unscrews to reveal a very long large capacity converter the converter is screwed to the outside of the tail of the section so you won't be able to use cartridges with this pen although you might be able to eyedropper this pen the cap doesn't post but the pen is plenty long enough to write with unposted and it's very comfortable the section is very nice I bought this pen from Canwright on their website for 3,890 rupees 
or $56.94 US. I bought both pens together and paid $24.96 US flat rate for shipping and then another $22.64 Canadian for the UPS extortion fee for a whopping total of $43.08 US to get these two pens to me in Canada. Let me take a moment to revisit the packaging here. I know we're not supposed to care that much about packaging, but this degree of sloppy workmanship shows up in the actual pens themselves. Look at the workmanship here. It looks like a grade three foam and glue gun project gone bad. If this passes quality control inspection, then the company doesn't care about quality in the least. I have no issues with handcrafted writing instruments, but I do draw the line at simply not giving a crap about quality. The Ranga pens are handmade, but with pride of workmanship. And they're also packaged in hand-sewn Indian linen cloth. That's pride in workmanship, if you ask me. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Canwrite Heritage Blue Marble with a Pelican M800 piston filler, a Hongdian N7 piston filler, and a Tianzi piston filler, and a Moonman M800. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Canwrite doesn't even post straight because it's sitting on those threads. The Pelican is a gorgeous poster, as is this new Hongdian N7. Actually posts with a click, a proper click. Can't wait to review that pen. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Now let's take a look at the Legacy model and those size comparisons. And here is the Canwrite Legacy Ebonite Red Swirls with a Ranga 3C in red ebonite, a Ranga 4C in black ebonite, a Leonardo Ferrore Grande piston filler, and an Opus 88 Bella. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Well, the Canwrite doesn't post at all. And these pens become very, very long, but at least they do all post. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. They're all relatively large pens. But unposted, they're all fairly comfortable in the hand, at least my hand. Now let's look at some measurements for both pens, and I'll be back with some writing samples. <music> And we're back with the writing portion of the review. And I'm really glad because I finally get to say some nice things about these pens rather than ragging on their shortcomings. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And let's start with the Canwrite Heritage Blue Marble. And it has a number six size steel nib and it is a medium let's check the wetness I could tell when I inspected the nibs before inking them that both of these pens would be wet writers and this certainly is one I was gritting my teeth as I put this nib to the paper for the first time, hoping it would at least write so I wouldn't have to trash the entire pen. And I was delightfully surprised that this nib is not only smooth and wet, but it also has a slight bit of bounce to it. And the ink today is a Roshizuku Asagao which is Morning Glory. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. And I spoke about line variation. Let's see, it's starting off. It has some line variation that you can push out of it. Again, it's not a flex, but it has some bounce, which makes 
ordinary writing have a little bit of flair. Very nice. See, just ordinary writing, no pressure really. And I'm getting a little bit of line variation out of it. It's very nice. This nib makes a 0 0.5 millimeter line, which is a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's much scratchier, but it's actually doing it and keeping up and some quick writing it has no issues whatsoever that ebonite feed is very nice and wet and juicy and now for the legacy this is the can write Legacy in red swirls, and it has a number six size steel broad nip. And let's check the wetness here again. Very, very wet pen, as you can see. And the ink is dimine oxblood. It's a very, very nice ink. I like it a lot and a nice match for this red ebonite. And here are some matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. This nib doesn't have the bounce that the medium nib did. And it's already fairly thick, but you can squeeze a little bit of line variation out of it. It's not as bouncy, but it's certainly not a, a flex nib by any stretch. But it is very smooth, very wet, and a good amount of feedback. You can probably hear that. And the line this nib creates is zero. 0.6 millimeters which is a western medium or a Japanese medium to broad now this nib is nice and wet and juicy like the heritage but I have been experiencing while writing with it some degree of baby's bottom see the tops of some of those not as bad to oh there goes one so the tops of some of my downstrokes are starting to skip and that's a little bit of baby's bottom getting rid of baby's bottom is not that big a deal if you go through the correct procedure i have a short video on that subject that you can see up here and i'll link to it in the description below as well and for another quote And for some reverse writing. This has a lot more tooth to it. A little bit more scratchy. Still very wet. And scratch this way. But it's giving me a slightly thinner line. But it works very nicely. And for some quick writing.
no issues whatsoever very wet that ebonite feed has a lot of ink in it it's terrific so what do i like and what do i not like so much about these fountain pens well get yourself a beverage and settle in this is going to be a long list you know that feeling you get in the pit of your stomach when you realize you've just lost a bunch of money on what turns out to be a bad purchase and you feel ripped off duped taken for a sap all three well, the moment i opened this box and saw the pens inside i felt that way i thought oh crap 110 dollars canadian down the drain plus 50 dollars in extortion fees to get this crap to my door it makes you feel sick because it makes you feel stupid everything about these pens screams shoddy and sloppy workmanship plus this experience brought back the bad experience i had with the fountain pen revolutions himalaya version 2 a couple of years ago i won't recount that debacle but i'll link the review in the description so you can make your own judgments taking these poorly built pens out of the box and then seeing the careless way the box was put together just made me feel ill in throwing my money away i mean what could i have purchased instead of this for my 110 dollars four or five really decent pens i expect so I put the pens away and I didn't even ink them up for weeks until I could get over my embarrassment and try to do a review. And then I inked them both. And I was given some solace, at least. The nibs are not just okay, they're very nice indeed. I'll actually pull them out and put them in other pens and probably just, I don't know, put these in the drawer. Because this pen certainly is substandard for even the $30 US price point let's just look at this for an example so the acrylic heritage the clip is awful it isn't even a piston filler but a glued in converter and the edges are sharp to the point that they could break the skin now look at this Hongdian n7 piston filler i haven't even inked it yet and already it stands head and shoulders above this can right look at the chatoyance in that barrel beautiful satin piston knob beautiful satin and engraving on the cap and a clip that works and a really nice finial under acrylic and it has a clear ink window and all the hardware is nicely plated and the rings all fit perfectly the section is smooth and silky the nib is a number six size steel and this pen $29.39 US with $4 shipping and no extortion fees the can write was $27 and let's just add half of the shipping and extortion fee at $22 then that makes this pen $49 US. Is it worth it? Hell no. And what about the Legacy Ebonite? It is a much better pen, but has some of the same quality issues. The Legacy was $57 US plus add half the fees of the shipping, and it comes to $79 US. But you can get this much better Ebonite Ranga Splendor right now on a group buy on Facebook for $79 US with $10 to $19 US shipping depending on where you are in the world and that makes it $98 US at the most so there's no comparison in my mind and the Ranga is an artisanal handmade fountain pen as well and everything is quality and everything fits perfectly since fountain pen revolutions also sells Canrite I wouldn't be surprised if the FPR Himalaya is made by Canrite because this heritage looks and feels almost identical in workmanship of course i go through memory because i had to give that pen back for a partial refund because it didn't function these nibs are nice though not worth the money for the whole pen but you can actually just buy the nib units which are around 14 or 15 dollars us each and they have a nice selection of different grinds on their website from architects to stubs to obliques and even 14 karat gold nibs and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges plus now i'm providing unboxing videos as i get new pens exclusively for members only and that just leaves it for me to say Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.
this. 